Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking about Three's Company. It's absolutely one of my favorite shows from the 1970s and the 80s. So if you're a fan, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the thumbs up or like button. Same thing, it's absolutely free to do so and it does tell other people about my channel and that is super helpful. Now, if you do wanna see more Three's Company videos, I have links in the description or you can just type in Rick9G3's Company and they'll pop up for you. Today we're going to be focusing on an actress named Anne Wedgworth. Now if you are a Three's Company fan, you of course will know Jack, Janet, Chrissy, maybe Christy and so forth, all of the different characters, even the Ropers, Mr. Furley, but there is a character who would come in every once in a while and then the character disappeared, was never heard from again, and we were never given an explanation. Now that was played by the actress Anne Wedgworth. She played Lana Shields. Now she was only credited to be in 13 episodes. That is her name appeared in 13 episodes. However, she did not even physically appear in those 13 episodes. She only appeared physically in nine and the other she was just given credit and she never appeared on camera. Now what happened? Was she kicked off the show? Was she fired? Did she quit? Was she written out by the producers and so forth? Well, I'll give you all the information here, but it's a fun fact to know that the character of Lana had the shortest run of any regular character on Three's Company. Now, she went in very strong in an episode called Love Thy Neighbor as Lana Shields, but she went out and basically disappeared, was never seen from again, and there was never an explanation as to what happened to her or where she went. Now, we're going to get it directly from Anne Wedgworth herself, as well as the producers. And there is a bit of conflict there. So we're going to see which one you guys and gals believe. Now, Anne says that she wasn't fired which is very interesting because at the time the press actually said that she was fired. So there's a conflicting bit of information here. She continues that what actually happened was she was asked to be let out of the show. She apparently didn't have anybody to blame but herself, it was a bad decision and it was her own decision. These are her own words and I think it's very interesting to think about because we're gonna talk a little bit about the producers and what they said. However, there was a reason for her departure. Now for the first four shows, also known as the first four episodes, her part was terrific. But then if you do remember on the show, there was an amazing episode, one of my favorites. It's called A Camping We Will Go. And this is where she noticed that things were going wrong. Now it had all six regulars, it had Jack, Janet, Chrissy, it had Mr. Furley. It also, in fact, had Richard Klein, who played Larry, and then you had Lana. She started noticing that there were winds of change during the filming of this episode. There was a bit of a group meeting amongst all the actors and the director, and people were complaining here and there. She doesn't really drop any names, but everyone was giving their two cents worth. Some of the cast members were actually upset about the size of her role, saying that, well, it was too long, maybe it was too short, and to her, that baffled her because she always saw herself as a secondary character. She knew the show wasn't based around her, she just was happy being a supporting actress on the show. Now, the impression and understanding that Anne got was that the people in power, that is the three main cast members, had enough power to get the producers and writers to write her out of the show. And that's what she believed happened. After that camping episode, her parts started dwindling down to practically nothing. She would come in, be all over Jack, flirt with him and so forth. Jack would never go through her or would cater to her advances. But then of course, Mr. Furley would come in and would of course gush over her and she would have nothing about it. And then boom, she would leave and be off the set. And that was it, that was her little old part. And as I mentioned, it diminished until it finally disappeared. Now she admits that she should have gone to the producers and told them, hey, I want a bigger part. Why is my part getting any smaller? But she didn't do that. And she does credit that to be the downfall of her character and her acting role on the show. 
Now here's something that's a little bit worrisome. She had a manager at the time and she discussed that, hey, a lot of time effort goes into being on the show and the payment and so forth. And if my part is gonna be so minuscule that I literally have one or two minutes on camera and then leave, it's almost not worth it. She wanted to look at other things. So her manager agreed and said, don't worry, I'll talk to the head honchos or producers. They're not gonna let you go into the middle of the season. They're not gonna just make you disappear they won't let you go from the show. But unfortunately, about two weeks before the hiatus during Thanksgiving time, her manager called and said, hey, they don't know what to do with your character and they're going to let you go. Now let's hear from the other side now, that is from the producers themselves. You may be surprised and think that the producers may even have blamed Anne Wedgworth or blamed her for doing something wrong or take the blame off themselves, but that's contrary to what happened. The producer said that this was all our fault. This was Bernie West saying this. He said, somehow we didn't see our way. How much further could we have gone with the character? We just ran out of ideas. Now, Michael Ross also seconded this idea, saying that they weren't up to her usual brilliance when they casted her. They were really excited to have her on, but then as the course of the show went on, they thought, well, what can we do? We have the same thing over and over again. We have this girl that fawns, this older woman who fawns over Jack. Jack doesn't like her. And then of course, Mr. Furley likes her and she doesn't like Mr. Furley. It's kind of this love triangle that never happened. And after that was done over close to a dozen times, they were just done with it. I am super curious, guys and gals, if you even know who this character was, and I mean that because I know people who've watched the show casually and didn't even really know about the Ropers versus Furley, or they saw the Ropers here and there and so forth. So as dedicated fans that you may be, did you even notice Lana? Did you know her? Did you miss her when she left the show? Or did you not care? Was that part of the decline of the show? Because this was, remember, between seasons three and four, and the show lasted about eight seasons. So you can't really say the show ended because Lana left, but maybe it was the beginning to the end. Remember, by this time, Furley, that is Don Knotts, was there. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Very interested to always hear those. Thank you so much for your support, guys and gals, and most importantly, be hopeful. Thank you so much to all my supporters on Patreon, especially my diamond tier patrons. Tommy G, Citizen Kane 359, Grace U, Sally N, David D, and Ricky. You can find exclusive content on Patreon at different tiers. Go ahead and check it out and thank you so much.